Hello, friends. I hope you're out wandering through nature, exploring the natural world around you. Do you enjoy writing about your wanderings? Nature journaling is an awesome, fun way to remember all the adventures you have taken and how you felt during those journeys. If you're looking for some beautiful journals to keep track of all your wanderings, I have several available on Amazon, including some guided journals for children. Start your journey in journaling by clicking on the link in the show notes. Keep exploring the nature around you and keep journaling all your wanderings. Hello, friends, and welcome to the podcast. This is Paul, and today it's a nice sunny day. It's about, oh, I don't know, lower 80s, and it's um, really beautiful out. And I am out here picking pineapples. Yeah, I'm out here picking pineapples. Now, before you start going through the wandering Wednesdays, looking for some tropical location, saying, oh, Paul's probably in Florida or or down in, or over in Hawaii, or some tropical place picking pineapples, and I have to try to find out where exactly he is. And no, don't bother, because I'm not in some tropical place. I'm actually in my own yard. I'm in a part of my yard that I rarely am doing podcasts from, and that is in my driveway. So it's it's a nice, peaceful day. There wasn't any traffic going by either, which was kind of nice. Very little traffic, I should say. Um, the advantages of living in the country and having a, a Sunday morning that people are sleeping in, and I get to look for pineapples in my driveway. Yeah. So in my driveway, I have a, a gravel driveway, and that gravel driveway over the past 20 plus years that I've lived here has been packed down pretty good. Except, I don't know if you've ever seen the gravel driveway where it's like in the middle, you usually get stuff growing up, which drives a lot of people crazy. It drives me crazy sometimes too, where it gets really tall. And those, the weeds in the middle of that section sometimes you'll mow them over i've done that before um sometimes it'll go along and pick them all out and uh, other times people I, I i was making it a habit to actually start packing down that dirt better that gravel better i was driving kind of off center so that my tires would go over the center of the driveway packing it down it's amazing how nature is very resilient though I mean, I have where um, I have a back driveway that I don't use anymore, and I just kind of let it go. And nature has turned it pretty much back into a field. It's a gravel driveway once again, but it doesn't hold back on that. But if you're driving up and down the driveway constantly, it's packing it down. You're killing all the grass or weeds. I hate that word. I never like using the word weeds. According to dictionary.com weeds are a noun a valueless plant growing wild especially one that grows on cultivated ground to the exclusion or injury of the desired crop any undesirable or troublesome plant especially one that grows profusely where it is not wanted so that's dictionary.com's um, definition of a weed. So weed is something that's unwanted. In my opinion, all plants are wanted. Um, they're, they have their purpose. So many people spray their lawns. It drives me crazy. They spray their lawns, get rid of the dandelions or the plantain. It's like you can eat dandelions. You can make wine from dandelions. Plantain it has medicinal properties. Um, you can also eat plantain. They, You know, it's like, I'm sorry, <laughs> to me, they should just get rid of the word weed out of the dictionary. So anyhow, um, I, I will use that word just because that's the standard. That's what most people understand. But when I'm saying weed, 
I'm talking about plants that most people consider to be a weed. I don't. So, you're, I know I'm getting sidetracked here, but um, so I'm in my driveway here, <clears throat> gravel driveway, and I am going to be picking these pineapples. Now, if you're thinking, you know, when I say pineapple, these big tropical fruits um, that you make delicious drinks out of or you can eat. Um, I love pineapple juice. Um, I love fresh pineapple. I don't like the canned pineapple. Cause the canned pineapple has all the sucrose and the sugars added to it. And yeah, it's, I, I don't know. If, even if they say it's 100% pure pineapple, I don't really think it is. But, you know, I always read ingredients, make sure you read ingredients. Those aren't the pineapples I'm talking about anyhow, okay? Pineapples that I'm talking about, these are what's known as pineapple weed. I don't know if you've ever been out. They love growing in, in crappy soil, we'll put it that way. Um, so when you have a very poor, nutrient-poor soil, uh, gravel along roadsides, you see a lot of plants that love that very poor soil. Um, one of my favorite plants is mullein. Um, I love mullein. It gets that beautiful yellow flower on it, um, soft leaves on it. Um, but mullein, I, I just, you know, it's a really neat plant, so I just like it. You usually see it along roadsides because it loves that poor soil. And so does pineapple weed. Um, a lot of different plants do, and that's why uh, you always find it in the middle of my driveway. Now, I didn't give it the name pineapple weed, so the name weed, once again, I don't feel it should be on there. But instead of calling it pineapple plants, everyone would think, oh, we're getting these big pineapples that I can cut up and eat, that delicious fruit. And um, No, these are tiny little things. So I'm looking at some right now, the pineapple plant, pineapple weed. I should rename it pineapple plant, but um, if you ever go out and look in crappy soil, I got a whole big bunch. I've got them all up and down my entire driveway. I got a 400 foot driveway, and they're all up and down the middle of it. And um, let me describe it to you. Okay, the tallest plants I'm seeing here are approximately, let's see, I'm going to say about, you know what? I'm going to give you an exact measurement because I just happen to have a tape measure with me. So the height of the tallest plant that I have here is about four and a half inches. Uh, I'm, I'm looking down the driveway and I'm seeing a few that are a little bit taller. They can get to be up to six inches tall. Sometimes they're shorter. It depends on where they're growing, um, what, what they're trying to get, you know, above. I mean, these guys don't have a lot of competition. There's some plantain in the middle of my driveway, a little bit of grass, um, some other plants in here, but it's like mostly pineapple weed. And it's growing unobstructed, we'll put it that way. There's not a lot holding it back except for a car going over the top of it every once in a while. So this is able to grow much taller. I've seen it shorter. I've seen it where it's competing with the grasses around it, and it will grow a little bit taller in that case. So I have seen it um, where it's gotten to be about six inches, but that's about the maximum that you'll get. So six inches tall. Um, pineapple weed, uh, The just because this is an educational podcast, I'll give you the scientific name for it. And you know me with scientific names, I always have trouble pronouncing them. One of these days I'll take a class on how to pronounce scientific names. Uh, I don't even know if they have those classes. I'm sure there's one online. But anyhow, a uh, scientific name, Matricaria discoidea. Okay, so Matricaria discoidea. That's the scientific name, but most people know it as pineapple weed. I've also heard it called wild chamomile. Um, disc mayweed is another word that I've heard, another name for it. 
or rayless mayweed. So those are the most common names for it, but most people that I talk to, they call it pineapple weed. So that's this little flower, and it looks like a... You have one stalk coming up the middle, so let me finish describing it. You have usually one stalk coming up the middle, and then you have all these little shoots coming off it. So it's almost like a tree. And off of each branch, you've got a flower head at the end. So this one that I'm looking at, the tallest one that I have here, it actually has about 10 flowers on it. Now the leaves on it are very fine. Um, the, they have fine little, um, they almost look like the antenna of a moth. So very fine and frilly. Look up a picture. I'll make sure I post um, a picture on the website, when, on my, sorry, on my social media when this comes out. So um, look up a picture of pineapple weed and you'll see what it looks like. The flowers are, some of mine on this plant here are bright yellow. Those are the younger ones. And then they start turning a little bit greenish. And after a while, they start withering away and they turn brownish, sometimes a little bit white. And this actually, the middle one is starting to get old. It's, it's had its life, it's done. The ones around the edge are very bright yellow or green. And those are the ones I'm going to harvest, the pineapples. So that's what the pineapple weed looks like. There's a lot of them right in this section here. I've got another plant that, let me go over to that one. I'll describe that one because it's a little bit different. You've got one main root, and instead of one big stalk coming up, this has about six stalks coming up, and each stalk has maybe two pineapples on it, two or three pineapples. So they do, you know, change their growth a little bit, but most of the time it's one stalk coming up. Now, why do they have the name pineapple weed? Where does that come from? Well, if you find them in your driveway, what I want you to do, I want you to pick a couple of these flowers, rub them between your fingers, and then smell your fingers, or smell the pineapple itself. And what's it smell like? You got it, pineapple. So that's where it got the name pineapple weed. Oh, there's another reason. It looks like a pineapple. So the shape of it, um, makes it look kind of like a pineapple. So you've got this pineapple weed that smells and looks like a pineapple. Now I've heard some people say that it smells a little bit like chamomile, okay, which is where it got the name chamomile um, weed as well. So, or sorry, wild chamomile. Some people call it that because some people think it smells like chamomile or tastes like chamomile. I'll get to the taste thing in a little while. But they are in the same family. They're all in the daisy family. Okay, if you're unfamiliar with the daisy family, okay, the daisy family is Asteraceae, okay? Asteraceae or Asteraceae, once again, my pronunciation of scientific names, you know how that goes. Uh, but that's the daisy family. And the pineapple weed is in the daisy family. So is chamomile. So all of them are in the same family, daisies, chamomile, uh, pineapple weed. So that's why they do have a similar odor and taste to chamomile. At least some people think so. I think it's more like pineapple with a mix of chamomile. But mostly pineapple is what I always smell, what I always taste whenever I have it. Um, so it is an annual. It only comes up once a year if you're not familiar with perennials versus annuals. Um, it only has a one-year lifespan, but the seeds, you know, they get planted and you will get them next year. Trust me, you will. If um, you have them, they'll come back. Uh, the... They are native to North America. Mostly, they're, I mean, different sources that I've looked at, mostly they say that they're originally native to the Northwestern United States. And they were actually one of those that wasn't introduced here from Europe. Instead, we introduced them to Europe. Yeah, so 
Um, you have European um, pineapple weed, which was introduced from the United States, and they're also in um, Eurasia, okay? And most people say that they were introduced to all of Eurasia from the U.S., so it's one of our plants that was here originally. But it's all over the U.S. now, not just in the northwestern U.S., it's all over. So, when you take these, I am actually um, right at a section where I have a whole bunch of them, and I am going to harvest them. Now, let me talk real briefly about harvesting plants. First of all, if you are going to harvest any plant, make sure there is enough of that plant so it can reproduce. You don't want to clear an area of a plant. Uh, that has happened in the past with uh, herbals. Some companies have gone out and they've like cleared out a whole section of um, like purple cone flower. And because the seeds were implanted, they never came back. You know, they harvested them wrong. And so what I usually do is if I have, like I said, I've got a whole strip of pineapple weed up and down my driveway. I will walk along and I'll pick a few here. Then I'll go a little further, pick a few there. You know, I'll go a little further, pick a few there. Um, know where you're picking them to. Don't just go to a, someone's yard and start picking them, assuming that, oh, they don't spray pesticides or herbicides. You never know what they spray there. Uh, make sure it's a place where I know I don't use chemicals in my yard, so I know they're fresh and clean here. I know they're safe. Um, also, if you are harvesting any plants for medicinal or edible properties, know your plant. Okay? I'm not responsible. I am not responsible for this. I'm warning you right now. Some people can be allergic to pineapple weed. If you're unsure, if you've never had it before, take one little piece, eat it, and then just remember, you can eat the whole plant, but the best part is the flower part. Um, eat it and just don't eat any more. Not for a couple of days. If you don't have any allergic reactions to it, try a little bit more. You know, wait a couple of days, no allergic reaction. You can be pretty well, you know, satisfied that it is safe for you. You don't have any allergic reaction to it. But make sure, okay? Another thing I always like to say is if you are going to use any plant medicinally or um, for, you know, edibility, uh, edib what is the word I'm looking for? If you're going to eat it, okay? If you're going to eat it, check with your doctor first. You know, you may want to do that. Check with your doctor first. But, you know, I am going to talk a little bit about an edible plant here. So, there's my disclaimer. Don't try to sue me if you get sick because I warned you, okay? Um, most people are going to be fine. So, I don't want to throw a panic in you, but I also don't want the podcast shutting down because someone got sick eating pineapple weed. So, anyhow, I am picking a few here. I know my no pesticides, herbicides along my driveway. A few here, I'll walk up a little bit further. I'll pick some more. All I want is like two tablespoons full. That's all I want right now. So, I'm not decimating the whole population in my driveway. So, I am going to take those pineapple weeds, um, just the flower. I mean, you can t pick the whole plant. I know of some people, I haven't done it yet myself, but some people actually pick the whole plant and they put it in salads. Um, and it adds a little bit of a pineapple chamomile flavor to your salad. So you can do that as well. But I usually just pick the flower head and they're a little bit tough to get off. So if you want to take scissors and cut it off, that's fine. I usually just pinch it or pull it. Um, I try to hold the base because I don't want to rip the whole plant up so that new pineapples will grow on it. But I'm just picking off that little flower, that little pineapple, about two tablespoons. I'll take them inside. I did this last night. It was wonderful. Um, I took them inside. I put them into my tea infuser. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, if you're one of those people who likes tea but you always use tea bags, okay, try a tea infuser. I buy loose leaf tea and sometimes I make my own tea, my own loose leaf tea, 
and I put in an infuser. It's basically a metal stainless steel cup. Um, about, I'm going to say probably about an inch and a half tall, maybe a inch in diameter. It has tiny, tiny little holes in it so the tea leaves don't go through the holes. And you put it on the top of your cup. It's, it's flanged on the top. You put it on the top of your cup and you pour hot water through. So I did that last night when I um, picked some pineapple weed. I'm going to do it again this morning. But uh, I picked the pineapple weed, about two tablespoons. I put it in the tea infuser. And then I took it and I um, poured hot water over it, let it steep for about a minute. And then I, oh, before I put it in, okay, sorry, I missed a step. I did crush them a little bit, okay, so I kind of squeezed them between my hands, my fingers. You can also take, a, after they're soaked, you can take them and put them between some spoons, the pineapple seeds, flowers, um, and just kind of squeeze them between the spoons, get all the juices out. And then I take the infuser out and I've got this nice, it looks very clear, but you'll see a little bit of a yellow coloring to your water. And what you've got is pineapple weed tea. It tastes great, I love it. If you wanna add a little bit of honey, that's fine too. I usually don't add honey to it. Um, but yeah, it's completely edible. Like I said, you can put it in salad, you can make a tea, which is what I like to do with pineapple weed. Um, Native Americans used to use it. Yeah, they used to use it medicinally. They said, and once again, my disclaimer, this is not me saying, you know, this is what you need to use. No, the Native Americans, I'm just letting you know what they used to use it for. Um, they used to use it medicinally for gastrointestinal issues, so like upset stomach, uh, diarrhea, if you have fever, uh, infection. Yeah, this would, it would actually help to clean out the infection. They would uh, make a salve out of it and put it on there. Uh, also menstrual pain, they said it worked for. Now, I like it as a sleep aid. I have found that if I drink, I don't like drinking lots of liquids at nighttime because I'm up half the night. Yeah, I'm getting old. Uh, but I will usually, like an hour before bedtime, if I'm having trouble sleeping in the summer because I like it fresh, um, I will pick pineapple weed and I will... Have you noticed it's hard for me to say weed? <laughs> like I just don't like that word. But um, I will pick the pineapple weed now I'll make myself a cup of pineapple weed tea. And I find that I sleep so much better. Yeah, if I'm having one of those nights where it's just I'm having trouble sleeping, I drink the pineapple weed tea and it helps me to sleep. So it is known to help people to sleep. It's used as a sleep aid. Uh, the Shoshone Indians actually used to attach it to cradle boards. Uh, they would tie it right to the cradle board, the herb, and they would say that it would help the baby sleep, you know, just from the smell of it. So they would take the whole thing, the um, leaves, the, the flower, and they would just, you know, tie it to the cradle board to help the baby sleep so that they're not crying and keeping mom and dad awake all night. <laughs> so, um, if you take the dried herb, so you take it, you dry it, um, Look up how to dry it. That's a, it's, well, I can tell you, it's not that long a process. But basically, the best way to do it is to take it, keep it out of the sun, put it in a dark, dry place. Okay, if you have an attic, put it up there, um, hang it. Usually, I hang mine, I tie them by the roots, and I hang them upside down. Um, and that's how I dry herbs. Some people like doing it in the oven. I've never really done that. I'm not sure if that is better or worse. But I like drying mine naturally. So if you dry your herbs and you, um, add, you add oil to it, a carrier, um, you can get, make an essential oil from the dried herb. And they say that it repels mosquitoes better than a, a product that has deed in it. Seriously, there's been studies and it's like they've made this and it repels mosquitoes so you can put it on your body, spray it on your body. Uh, it has in it um, alpha terpenyl, spethylenol, and 
Um, these are some of the chemicals, natural chemicals that are in it. So they've been known to help repel the mosquitoes and sometimes other insects too that are bothering you. Now, remember though, I just mentioned a bunch of ways to use it medicinally, herbally, um, but remember it is, it can be, I should say, it can contain things that people can be allergic to. So be cautious whenever you use any natural herbs, any natural plants, anything natural, when you are using it either edibly or medicinally, um, please, please, please take caution, okay? Test it first. Make sure you're not allergic to it. So I just want to make sure. I mean, very few people are allergic to pineapple weed, but you could be one of those few that is, and I don't want that happening. So be cautious first. Um, when I first discovered that pineapple weed was edible instead of mowing it over all the time, uh, I started collecting it and I tested it on myself first and my wife did too. Uh, we made sure that we weren't allergic to it and then I started making the teas out of it. So it's a very relaxing tea. I like it almost the same as chamomile. And once again, I don't know if you know this, but chamomile tea is very relaxing too. It calms you in the same family. So um, I'm going to get back to my harvesting here so that I can relax the rest of the morning and have a cup of tea before I get into my busy, busy day. And I'd like to thank you for joining me. Go out in your yard. and I shouldn't say in your yard. Go down your driveway. Remember, they like compacted, um, poor soils. So driveways are one of the best places to find pineapple weed. But I've found them in, in fields, too. You know, I, I found them in on roadsides. If you're picking on roadsides, you know, make sure you wash it because you've got all those cars and oil and stuff going. But um, also be careful of any cars going by, too, if you're picking on a roadside. I, I prefer driveways. Keep an eye out for anyone pulling in your driveway. Uh, but, yeah, I, I go out there, pick some. Try it, test it first, and then make yourself some tea with it or maybe a insect repellent or, you know, just enjoy this little plant that we consider a weed and people are always trying to destroy. Uh, so give it a try. I'd like to thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed learning about pineapple weed. If you did, rate and review the podcast. And uh, don't forget, everything is in the show notes, okay? I always put um, ways to donate to the podcast. I, um, I just bought a new flashlight, UV flashlight. We're going to be doing some um, nighttime exploring and some podcasts coming up. So, you know, to pay for all these extra little things for the podcast, please um, support it through my Ko-Fi page. Links are in the show notes. I have nature journals if you want to keep track of what you've been seeing out there in nature, even in your own backyard. Um, grab a Nature Wander nature journal. The links are in the show notes. I have merch online. Um, so all of that is going to be in the show notes. Support the podcast. Um, I hope to see you back next week. And enjoy the rest of your day. And above all, keep exploring the nature around you. Have a great day. Did you know that plastic is made with oil? A fossil fuel that pollutes the environment. And did you know that only about 15% of all plastic is recycled into new products? Wouldn't it be awesome if we could live our lives without plastic so that we could stop harming the planet? Well, there's a company that wants to help you do just that. Life Without Plastic sells products that will reduce or eliminate your dependence on plastic. They have a large selection from toothbrushes to food storage containers to drinking straws, all plastic-free. And it's reasonably priced. So what are you waiting for? Check out all these great plastic-free products and help save the planet. Just click on the link in the show notes to find out more and to start your journey to being plastic-free.